thank you for being with us this evening as we join together across our region and the province to offer our prayers and ask our merciful God for strength and healing. This evening, we remember all the souls who have been lost in the time that we have been apart, but in a very special way, we pray for the repose of the souls of Chris, Bradley, Adelaide, and Joseph Trainer. We particularly hold Loretta, Sam, Chris's mother, Gwen, and his brothers, Jeff and Stephen, close to our hearts in their time of grief and mourning. We pray that they, along with the family and friends of the trainers and their school communities, find comfort. No one will ever be able to understand why this tragedy has occurred. In normal times, our response would be to gather together physically, knowing that the weight of our sadness is lightened when we share it among all who grieve. As a board, we have chosen love as our pastoral theme this year. Today, we are showing that love by resisting our instinctual desire to be together in order to protect one another. The gift of our faith is that we know our community transcends physical space and time. God hears our prayers no matter where they come from. It is a powerful, image to reflect upon when we think of all of the prayers that are emanating from the corners of our community this evening. As we begin our service, we respectfully acknowledge that we here in the Durham region are on the traditional lands of the Mississaugas of Scugog Island. We acknowledge the storytellers and the story keepers who have gone before us. Tonight, all are welcome. Your time and your presence are deeply appreciated. Our liturgy has been created in accordance with our Judeo-Christian Catholic tradition. Following the prayer service, we have invited our board mental health lead, Diane Mullane, and a representative from Catholic Family Services, Cindy Zamiska, to speak to our community about mental health and self-care and to share information regarding support services for those in need. We are blessed tonight to begin with His Eminence Cardinal Collins, who as Chief Shepherd of all the faithful in our Archdiocese has provided a message uniting all of us in spiritual solidarity in the wake of this terrible tragedy. Our faith community joins with so many from Durham and across the province and country who are in mourning at this unspeakable tragedy. It is difficult to find answers when this cloud of sorrow consumes us. For Catholics and those of many other faiths, in these moments we turn to prayer. In our faith, we find consolation and hope. Scripture also reminds us of how our faith can guide and support us on life's journey. Jesus invites us to care, serve, and love one another. We know that this example of selflessness has been central to the lives of the Trainer family. This has been expressed through their service to others and in countless ways that so many of you hold deep in your hearts. This tragedy reminds us of the fragility of life. It prompts each one of us to reflect on how we live each day and the importance of focusing on what truly matters. So in the days ahead, let us look for ways to reflect the face of Jesus' love to all those we encounter. Let us find ways to be light in the midst of darkness. And finally, let us pray for the Trainer family, for those who have been called home to God, and those who will ensure their legacy continues for years to come. May God bless you. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Let us begin with the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the God of love, 
who is our comfort and strength, be always with you. And with your spirit. faith, we believe that all the ties of relationship and affection, which knit us as one together through our lives, do not unravel with death. Let us ask the God of all consolation to open our hearts to his word, so that listening to it, we may comfort one another, find light in time of darkness, and faith in time of doubt. Let us pray. Lord, in our grief, we turn to you. Are you not the God of love who opens your ears to all? Listen to our prayers for Chris, Bradley, Adelaide, and Joseph. Lead them to your kingdom of light and peace and count them among your saints in glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. What then shall we say to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. How will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, rather, was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you, when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Not long ago at Mass, we read Jesus' great question. Who do you say I am? And Peter answers, inspired by grace. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. This is the central truth of our faith. And as, as, and as we are reading now, much earlier in Matthew's gospel, we can see this truth in action. Just before the Beatitudes in chapter four, Jesus rebuffs the temptations of the devil Jesus is undoing the fall of Adam and Eve. Sin and death are defeated. And as soon as his identity and his mission are clear, he gathers his disciples to bring the new creation to fruition among us. The gospel tells us he went all around Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness. His fame spread to all of Syria Great crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, and Judea, and from beyond the Jordan followed him. Launching his mission, Jesus teaches the life of discipleship to his own apostles and to these crowds. Today, on this day of our very great sorrow, we proclaim the charter of this life that makes us belong to the saving and healing love of Christ, that changes 
the order of life. We are children transformed in Christ's light, and no darkness can overcome it. In the Beatitudes, Jesus identifies us with himself. In saying blessed, he is not pointing just to some benefit we can enjoy. No, we are joined with him. We are part of his overcoming of the devil, of evil, and of death. We enter into this new relationship of creation to its creator. The more we embody the Beatitudes, the more simply Christ is present to this world, joining it to his new life. We cannot understand what has happened, but we can go to the center, to the heart of what is good and true. We can unite ourselves in prayer, even wordless prayer, for the whole trainer family and love them. But those still with us and those who have so painfully left us are also included. May Chris, Bradley, Adelaide, and Joseph know this new life completely and see God face to face. May the Beatitudes become the heart and center of the way we live, making us all belong more and more to Christ. May Jesus, who has overcome the evils of this world and who has conquered death, raise us together that we may truly live in the same hope. With trust in the Lord's merciful love, let us confidently present our intentions to God. Our response to each petition is, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Welcome Chris, Bradley, Adelaide, and Joseph to the place you have prepared for them in paradise. We pray in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ Jesus, you are the glory of believers and the life of the just. Admit them into the company of those who have gone before them and are numbered among your saints in glory. We pray in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ Jesus, they were entrusted with your light in baptism. Surround them now with the radiance of your undying light. We pray in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ, you are kind and compassionate. Free those who mourn from their distress and lift the burden of their sorrow. We pray in your mercy, hear our prayers. Christ Jesus, Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer unjustly, these sins against your love, and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. We pray. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ Jesus, you promised a new heaven and a new earth. Set our hearts on the things of heaven and keep us faithful in your service. We pray. In your mercy, hear our prayer. With a longing for our home in heaven, let us pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we humbly entrust Chris, Bradley, Adelaide, and Joseph. In this life, you embrace them with your tender love. Deliver them now from every evil and allow them to enter eternal rest. The old order has passed away. Welcome them into paradise where there will be no sorrow, no weeping, nor pain, but the fullness of peace and joy with your Son and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. May the love of God and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ bless and console us and gently wipe every tear from our eyes. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon us and remain with us forever. Amen.
name is Jeff Trainer, brother of Chris Trainer, and uncle to Bradley, Adelaide, and Joseph. On behalf of Loretta, Sam, and the entire Trainer family, I'd like to express how profoundly grateful we are for all the kind words of condolence this past week. Loretta and Sam are overwhelmed and thankful for your support. Your words of comfort have helped the family more than you could ever know. We'd also like to thank the Durham Catholic District School Board and the staff, students, and alumni at Monsignor Paul Dwyer High School, Sir Albert Love, and St. Teresa Catholic School. Chris and Loretta love teaching and love the students and staff that they work with. Sir Albert Love and Monsignor Paul Dwyer have also had a significant and positive impact on the lives of Bradley, Sam, Adelaide, and Joseph. We are thankful for the kind gestures and ongoing support from the entire Oshawa community. We recognize that you too grieve the loss that this wonderful family has experienced, and we hope that the prayers and words this evening provide some comfort and solace. Thank you. said this is episode one of your Canadian Law Personal Trainer. Howdy sports fans. Howdy everybody. Today we are going to be talking about the War of 1812. 12, 12, 12. Yes, I bring my own echo with me. Uh, if, I don't know why I'm using this, this was, this was part of the prop here that I used. To... Make sure you're taking notes. Right now I'll wait for you to get a piece of paper and a pen. Just kidding, I'm not waiting. You can pause the video. It's to the Oh, hey, yeah, go, go, go Saints. Oh, there, there it is. Go Saints. Called Master and Commander. And have you seen the movie uh, starring that very dreamy uh, Russell Crowe? The official pants of COVID-19. Because, hey, you're not going out. No one's coming in. You might as well just chillax in Roots Pants. Official pants of COVID-19. 19. Uh, all right, so concludes your Canadian Law Personal Trainer, episode number one. See you soon. Goodbye. See you next time. See you next time. And, oh, hey, go Saints. Uh, but just kidding. Don't go anywhere. Stay at home. Be safe. All right. See you next time. Hello, my name is Cindy Zamiska, and I'm a clinical therapist and program supervisor at Catholic Family Services of Durham. I'm here this evening to speak to you about how, how to support your children, your teens, and most of your families through this very tragic time that you're all experiencing as a school and faith community. Know that most of the time, most families, most caregivers, most children, most teens will get through the grieving process in the way that they need to. It's a difficult process and it won't be without its bumps along the way, but for most people, with time, the healing process will begin. There are a lot of um, behaviors, emotions, uh, changes that you might see within all the family members in your family. Some of these are emotional, where some people will withdraw and isolate themselves, others will have outbursts that might not make sense at the time, might be the result of something that seems insignificant to everyone else. Some of the kids and teens and even adults might keep asking the same questions over and over again. And it's not because they haven't been listening, but it's because they're trying to make sense of this senseless tragedy um, and they're trying to understand how to accept it and how to move forward. Some children will demonstrate some changes in academic performance. Others will have altered perceptions where they think that they see people. Um, you know, they're out in a crowd and they might think they saw their friend's face. Um, they might 
sense that they feel their presence. Um, some individuals are going to have trouble with thinking patterns where they find it hard to let some of these thoughts go. Know that all of this is normal and it's expected as part of the process. It's not a linear process um, and it's a very individual process. So you'll likely see different grief responses within the different members of your family and know that's okay. In terms of supporting one another, it's really important to have as open communication as possible. It's okay to grieve as a family together. It's okay for your children to see you cry if you are sad as well. Um, it's really important to debunk some of the myths and rumors that might be circulating to help your children, your teens, and your other family members to move through this process in the healthiest way possible. Now, having said this, for some individuals, they might require supports from outside their caregiving unit. And this can occur through the school board, as previously mentioned, but there are also community resources that are available. Times where you might want to look at seeking uh, this additional support as caregivers would be um, when you're questioning, when you're not sure um, whether or not you should be seeking additional support. Feel free to give any of these agencies a call um, that are up on the screen. There's Catholic Family Services of Durham, um, and this is where I work, and what you would do is give us a call at 905-725-3513. Please leave a voicemail message with your contact information, and it's really important that you let them know that you're calling due to this unforeseeable tragedy. We want to make sure that we're able to respond to you in a very timely manner. Another agency that's available is Frontenac Youth Services, and they can be contacted at 905 579 1551 extension 245. Other times where you might want to reach out to either of these agencies is when you see that your family member isn't moving forward, that their grief is impacting their lives at home, at school, at work um, for a significant period of time. You know, it's been a month, it's been two months, um, and they just don't seem to be able to uh, move forward in a way that's helpful for them. Um, these might be situations where an individual is having trouble sleeping, nightmares, uh, they continue to be withdrawn, um, they're having uh, illnesses, um, difficulty concentrating, sad a lot of the time, um, sometimes they're blaming themselves. Uh, it, it can be a number of different emotional responses um, and uh, physical responses. But the key is that they're persisting and the person isn't getting any relief from them. This would be an important time to reach out. Also, um, for the individuals in the family who aren't comfortable um, maybe sharing what they're going through with other family members, this can happen just as normal teenage behavior, but it also sometimes is because a family member doesn't want to burden other members who are going through the same thing. Um, and if this person is willing to engage in counseling, this would be uh, a really important time to do that. Um, it's really important so that everyone can move forward in a way that is going to bring them healing um, so that they can move forward, um, not just with the traumatic memories, but also the positive memories um, that they have of that individual with the positive memories becoming the dominant memories. Again, if you have someone in your family, um, kids, teens who aren't willing to talk um, and you're feeling like maybe they need to, a great way to do that is to talk about what you're going through yourself. Often as caregivers, as parents, uh, we model for our children and our teens how to respond to situations, but also feel free to give them the um, number for kids, uh, kids Help phone um, or the text. So the phone number is one 800 668 6868 or they can text connect to 686868 and there's also um, an online chat and this is confidential so this may give them a forum where they might be willing um, to connect with somebody who can support them appropriately. Lastly, this is an incredibly difficult time. This is a tragedy of unimaginable proportions um, and there are going to be um, some of our youth uh, and some of our families uh, who are really having a hard time navigating this. If you are feeling that it is a crisis situation, a situation where you're not able to wait till the next day um, to receive support, please do not hesitate to call Distress Centre Durham at 905 
1-800-742-2522 or the Durham Region Crisis Response at 1-800-742-1890. And most importantly, if you are worried about the safety of a family member, please visit your nearest emergency department. Thank you, and once again, please feel free to reach out to any of us as needed. Thank you. I'm Malene, and I'm the mental health leader with DCDSB. As a Catholic school community, we recognize that the impact of this unimaginable tragedy extends well beyond the schools who are directly impacted, throughout the board and into the broader community. With the other layers of stress that parents, teachers, and students have been under, our grief reactions may be further compounded. At this time, it's more important than ever that we seek support through our family and friends, and that we lean on each other and our faith to get through this. The well-being of our students is the utmost priority for all of us as we transition back to school following an extensive break under these difficult circumstances. Please know that as a board, we have a team of mental health professionals who are available to provide support to students and parents who are in need. If you would like to discuss possible supports for yourself or your child, please contact the administrator at your school. We also have a support access line that parents can call to be connected with one of our mental health professionals. DCDSB students and families can call the support access line and leave a voicemail with their contact information. One of our mental health professionals will call back to provide support. The number's on this slide, and it's 905-576-6150, extension 21021. Please note that this is not a crisis line and will not be monitored 24-7. If you are experiencing a mental health crisis and need immediate crisis support, please call Durham Region Crisis Response, 1-800-742-1890, or go to your nearest emergency department. We know that many of our staff may also need support. We have communicated internally about the supports available to staff and we encourage everyone to reach out for support as needed. My deepest sympathies and prayers are extended to all families who have suffered loss during the school closures, including the trainer family, their friends, colleagues and school communities as they deal with this senseless and tragic loss. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I extend my sincere condolences to the entire Trainer family, in particular, Loretta and Sam. To all the members of our community at large who are mourning the loss of these beautiful lives, know that we are united through the prayers that we offer and our faith in our Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray that by this merciful love, we will find strength and consolation. We would like to acknowledge the many messages of condolence that have been received from people across the province. Special prayers of thanks also go out to all of the first responders and medical professionals who have supported the family during this very difficult time. Thank you to everyone who participated in creating this liturgy in honor of the Trainer family. Most especially, our system animator for faith formation, Catherine Mustachi, Monsignor Paul Dwyer Chaplain, David Dubowitz, His Eminence, Cardinal Collins, Father Bob O'Brien, Pastor of St. Gregory the Great, Jeff Trainer brother of Chris, our readers and musicians, our board mental health lead, Diane Mullane, Catholic Family Services Representative, Cindy Zamiska, our communications team, our technical producers, Michael Drake, teacher at Monsignor Paul Dwyer, and Ronald Rodriguez, Chief Information Officer, and our Director of Education, Tracy Burrell. This concludes our time together. May the love of Christ be with you in all the days and weeks ahead.